Hey Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome to my first look and analysis and impressions of Mali in Civilization VI, Gathering Storm. Mansa Musa leads Mali in Civilization VI, Gathering Storm. He may have been the richest man who ever lived and used his wealth as a tool to enrich his empire. Mali's unique ability is Songs of the Jaili. City centers receive additional food and faith for adjacent desert and desert hills tiles. Okay, that's um, that's pretty damn powerful. The ability on its own will allow Mali to do some very interesting things in desert that other civilizations won't be able to. Typically, you want to settle um, on the edge of desert. For example, if you're going for Petra, so that you can get access to maybe a couple of forest shops to be able to get a little bit of infrastructure in your desert cities. Uh, deserts tend to be a little bit weaker overall. Uh, the biggest weakness of deserts is actually the growth and production. So this kind of deals with one of those problems. Like if you settle a plus six food city in the desert, um, that means your city has a base of plus eight food, which means they can support four population. Uh, right? Is that right? No. Yeah, I think it's plus plus four population, right? Plus four or five. I, my brain isn't doing the math right now. <laughs> um, which basically means that you can you can get up to four or five population, and then with something like a granary and a um, with a granary, a watermill, and a trade route with plus two or three food, you can easily get up to plus seven population in a desert, which is enough to build three districts. Which is about uh, I would consider three districts to be. Um, the sort of minimum you need in a city for it to be uh, really, really relevant to the outcome of the game, relevant to your empire's, um, you know, general, you know, th three districts is about what I would say is, you know, I wouldn't really expect a city to build more than three districts, right? And it actually also looks like he's able to build districts on floodplains, or that they changed that, I'm not sure, or this might be the new type of floodplains, actually, yeah, sorry. So, you can just build districts there anyway. Um, in combination with some of the new stuff, like floodplains and uh, storms and all the cool stuff, you should be able to actually build uh, pretty good cities in the desert. So that's kind of exciting. Being able, to, being able to get up to a higher population in deserts overcomes one of the biggest weaknesses of deserts. Mines will provide less production, but a significant gold increase. Okay, extra gold is interesting. I'm not sure... If that's really very strong production is really powerful in the game gold is kind of like production that you can move anywhere so this might change how you play them maybe you'll go more heavy on purchasing and stuff like that i'll have to see what their other abilities are really and commercial hub buildings can be purchased with faith okay so they have a bonus to gold and faith generation so that kind of makes me lean them towards a well actually gold and faith is really kind of they're very general resources that you can use towards any victory type, especially with the new victory type, the diplomatic victory type, being very gold heavy from what I remember. This is going to make them very flexible, but I don't know if flexible sieves are very good. Uh, most of the sieves that we've seen that are flexible tend to be kind of not great, but we'll kind of see how their abilities play out. Mali's unique district is the <clears throat> Suguba, which replaces the standard commercial district. This district grants a discount to every faith and gold purchase in the city. In Whoa, did that like flash a discount there? Let me see. This district grants. So 260. So the builder was 260, went to 210. So that looks like it's about a 20% discount. Um, yeah, 20% discount's pretty decent if you have your uh, commercial hubs up, especially if you have extra gold generation and extra faith generation and you're building holy sites and commercial hubs together. That's interesting. You'll be able to purchase a lot of stuff. It's a discount to every faith and gold purchase in the city in which it's placed and receives a major adjacency bonus for rivers and holy sites. Oh, wow. The Monde Kalu Very Kalu nice. is Mali's unique unit. This medieval unit receives gold from hills and provides protection to nearby trader unit. Getting gold from kills is pretty decent. What was its strength? It's 49, so I'm not... What, what, what was it replacing? This medieval unit receives gold from kills. So it looks like it's replacing knights, maybe? 
that's okay if if it replaces knights that means you don't need strategic resources to build them and the extra gold on kills is nice it's not super amazing but it's decent and provides protection to nearby trader units the trader protection isn't so great uh we'll come back and really look at this Sahel merchants golden ages increase trader capacity and trade routes receive extra gold for each desert tile in the origin city that's pretty powerful getting free trade routes is good um i really like that ability that's you that's quite unique i'd like to see more abilities for getting golden ages like extra permanent bonuses that's nice i like this ability it's i wouldn't say it's the strongest ability i think it's it's another ability that makes it so that you get more value where other civilizations don't which is really really nice Though desert empires typically struggle to grow, Molly's focus on gold... Actually, did I check there? I wanted to check. Did that apply to um, internal trade routes? trade routes receive extra gold for each desert... No, it's only international trade routes. Okay. <clears throat> ...tile in the origin city. Though desert empires typically struggle to grow, Molly's focus on gold and purchase power will give you what you need to keep up with or surpass civs settled elsewhere on the map. Money may not buy happiness but you may be able to buy victory as Molly. With this much gold and faith in his pocket, Mansa Musa can go for any type of victory. Okay. Will you store up the treasures of this world and the next? How will you lead Molly in Sid Meier's Civilization VI Gathering Storm? So that's very cool. I like the Civilization. Let's take a moment to look at their the list of their abilities here. So, unique. so uh, let's go down one by one and read them very carefully because I have actually made a couple of mistakes uh, while I was reading through these before. So they have Sahel Merchants. This gives their international trade routes plus one gold for every flat desert tile in the origin city and receive plus one trade capacity every time you enter the Golden Age. Okay, that's a fairly straightforward bonus. I'm going to try and read through them all and then try to talk to about them as a sort of overall concept and maybe then go through them one by one. City centers gain plus one faith in food for every adjacent desert or desert hill tile. Mines receive minus one production and plus four gold. May purchase commercial hub build Buildings with faith minus 30 percent production when constructing buildings or training units oh wow that's um that's a really big penalty but they do have a gold income bonus to make up for it we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment here then we've got the mali unique medieval era unit that replaces a knight so it is a knight replacement trader units are immune to being plundered if they're within four tiles of a mandakalu cavalry and on a land tile combat victories provide gold equal to 100 percent of that unit's base combat strength okay so maybe some sort of medieval timing push to start a war even just to kill uh, like units around a city state or something might be worth it just for the extra little bit of gold and then they've got the suguba which is a district unique to the mali specializing in finance and trade that replaces the commercial hub units building and districts are 20 percent cheaper to purchase with gold and faith in this city uh, plus two gold bonus for each adjacent holy site plus two gold bonus from all tiles containing a river edge from a tile containing a river edge and plus one gold for every two adjacent district tiles okay so the overall impression here that I'm getting is that they wanted to gear a civilization almost entirely around gold purchasing, um, but a civilization that was gold purchasing and could also maintain high levels of production was overpowered. So that I think that's why they gave this minus 30% production when constructing buildings or training units. Um, my worry is that this minus 30% production will apply to settlers, um, which is going to make it very hard to settle as Mansa Musa and it's going to make just in general your whole start of the game because in the start of the game you don't have a huge amount of gold right now I mean if you do settle in a desert if they have a desert bias the extra gold will kind of at least partially or mostly sort of make up for that um but yeah the lack that the production penalty is pretty painful especially when you consider not all of their cities are going to be in desert they are going to have to settle uh any land that they can get you know whether it's plains or grassland or tundra even and that 30 percent production is going to hurt but hopefully their ability to get gold from mines will make a big difference also it's it's important to remember here uh, being able to the the uh, where is it again? The twenty percent uh, discount to cheaper faith purchasing is actually a really good bonus because if you consider uh, you know 
religious units that purchase with fate, so that's a bonus toward the religious victory. Uh, there are city-states that give you bonuses to purchasing uh, certain things with faith. There are uh, abilities in the government district that give you the ability to purchase with faith. The new promotion for Moksha allows you to purchase districts with faith. So that means you could have Moksha and Reina running around the map purchasing districts with them, which will really help your empire develop if you go for holy sites and commercial hubs. Um, so this, this is a really, really powerful bonus in Gathering Storm. And I'm really interested to see how these guys play out. I think they I think they will have to play heavily on the purchasing side of things, which almost feels like they need a holy site and a commercial hub in every city, which the downside of that is they are going to be waiting um, for growth to be able to build a district that actually matters for their victory condition, like campuses and theater squares, uh, which is a bit of a downside. But they will have a lot of golden faith, so that could be fun to play around with. They, they, they might actually be a really good domination save uh, once you hit the mid-game. I'm excited for these guys. I think I think they have some really interesting bonuses. The Sahil Merchants, um, this is... The, the plus one trade capacity every time you enter a Golden Age is reasonably powerful. I would say that's a decently strong bonus. The extra gold from every flat desert tile in the Origin City... That's also another reasonably strong bonus, especially if you can get your hands on a pretty wide desert city with a lot of tiles. Uh, the plus one gold, that's going to add up quite nicely. And remember, gold for the Mali are, is production. Uh, gaining plus one faith and plus one food for every adjacent desert and desert hill tile is quite powerful. Again, it, it kind of overcomes one of the biggest weaknesses of desert cities, which is you uh, you have you struggle with growth and production. And the getting the extra gold will also kind of help with the uh, production issues you usually struggle with in the desert. I don't know how often I will purchase my commercial hub district buildings with faith. Probably I would at least purchase the market with faith because that gives you the plus one trade route and a decent chunk of gold. And it scales really well with um, economic city states. So uh, the Mandakalu Cavalry, I, it's okay. It's a knight replacement that doesn't cost strategic resources. It doesn't really have a huge combat boat boost as far as I remember. I can't remember what knights are base. I think knights are like 40 something base. So they probably have like a plus five bonus to combat strength, which is reasonably strong. It's not terrible. I would say that this is a pretty damn strong civilization. Um, if I, I'd say that Mali are situationally very, very strong. Um, but in a general sense, they can be quite weak. <clears throat> Um, I'm trying to think. Getting really high... So it just seems like a lot of their bonuses will feed together to force you to play a certain way. Getting the extra gold bonus adjacency for their um, commercial hubs is quite nice. It means you, if you slot in cards that give you adjacency bonus uh, yields, it's going to be quite nice. And... Uh, cheaper. So it just seems like they're very... I, I feel like they're going to struggle in the early game particularly if this 30% production applies to building settlers. Um, they will be able to purchase settlers, but settlers are really, really expensive. And then if you're purchasing settlers, you're not purchasing other things. So it's kind of a wash in that regard. I think if you use Reina and Moksha with the fully outfitted promotions that allow you to purchase districts and manage to get your holy sites and commercial hubs up, you'll be able to make an absolutely insane empire with the Mali. I think I think that's like the main sort of mainline gameplay. Now, the only downside to that is uh, promoting both of those guys up to that level is going to be very expensive in terms of your um, governor promotions. And governor promotions are quite precious. So it might be... Hmm. Yeah. At least the 30% production doesn't apply to city projects, so stuff like going for a space race victory won't be completely terrible for them. And the extra gold will allow them to purchase builders more efficiently to be able to feed into the spaceport. Uh, in terms, So in terms of a science victory, I would say they have potential. They're going to be a little bit slow because they want to get their holy sites and co uh, commercial hubs up. In terms of a... In terms of a culture victory, now now do do keep in mind these. I, I'm kind of thinking about these victories in terms of uh, rise and fall. Those victory types are changing in Gathering Storm. In terms of a theater's uh, 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 culture victory, extra faith generation is really really good for culture victories, and gold generation can be really really powerful as well. So I'd say 
they don't have any direct again it's another one of these civilizations that have very general bonuses that can apply across a multitude of situations uh the downside of that is because they don't have a particularly strong bonus you often don't have a guiding theme to push you through the game which means like you know you don't get a bonus to tourism uh which means you don't generate any more of the critical yield than another civilization would generate you just have the ability to get the normal amount of that yield easier than other civilizations um, and oftentimes that tends to not be a very strong bonus because you want to be getting extra value where other civilizations aren't and the mali can get a lot of extra value where other civilizations can't in terms of their holy sites and <clears throat> and commercial hubs but that is not directly feeding into a victory type except for a diplomatic victory i'd say so i'd say they have reasonably strong bonuses towards I'd say they have very strong bonuses towards a religion victory with extra fate generation and discount on fate purchasing. Um, I would say they have a reasonably strong attempt at a science game. I would say they have an okay attempt at a culture game. I would say they have a pretty damn strong domination game if you can get an infrastructure rolling. I would say they're not very... I, I wouldn't say they're a civilization that goes immediately into domination. I think they would spend a bit of time building an up empire and then going for a domination victory. Uh, and just being absolutely unstoppable at that point. I, um, I think that their diplomatic victory game is going to be quite strong because that's ba a lot of the diplomatic victory stuff is based around gold and being able to purchase diplomatic favors and then expend them. So I think that's kind of cool. The only downside is, again, they don't have any... See, the, the, the big problem with this civilization is they don't have extra yields towards a victory type, right? They don't generate extra... Um, diplomatic favor they just have an easier time getting it from other civilizations uh they don't generate extra science they just have an easier time getting science the normal amount of science right so um a very general very very general civilization and it'll be interesting to see how they play um i i tend to find flexible civilizations that don't have a particularly you know min maxi ability to be very good but i think they will be at the very least they'll be fun to play and you will get a lot of extra value and don't forget you don't have to place the cities in the desert right because they can still get good value from other land particularly with the plus four gold um so i'm excited to see how that plays out especially um considering commercial hubs are already really good and if the saguba is 50 percent production discount because it's a unique district that's going to be even better yeah. The only problem is the Saguba comes pretty late into the game, so you might struggle. Yeah, I think they're going to struggle a little bit in the early game. Might be worth it to rush for Saguba. Hmm. We'll see how they play out. But I would say overall, I would rate Mali as having really really strong bonuses but they're not a really really strong civilization like their their abilities are really really powerful but they're not a strong civilization because all of their abilities are very general they don't apply to a specific win condition um so that's kind of a downside I, well aside from religion i think their religion game is one of the strongest in the game even if they don't really have a bonus towards getting a religion uh but yeah that's been it for my analysis and impressions video i hope you guys enjoyed this video please remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos from me remember to leave a like if you want to directly support my channel and remember to leave a comment if you want to give me your feedback other than that i want to say i love you all very much and i'll see you next time Bye bye